to travel now, it has been made even more world famous by the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. But Rotorua has always been one of our favourite destinations. Our resident travel expert, Debbie Griffiths, has been getting back to nature. Good morning. Good morning. Well, Rotorua, of course, well known for its thermal pools, but it's also a really amazing place to get the kids out in the fresh air for an active weekend. And we absolutely fell in love with the Redwoods Mountain Bike Park. So it's just off the main highway south of Rotorua. It's one of the oldest mountain bike networks in the country. So if you don't have your own bike, Mountain Bike Rotorua is the on-site bike hire. So the friendly team out there will kit you out with the right size bike and the helmet and then they point you in the right direction to get to the tracks that will suit you best. So we tried out the path that heads back towards the city. It's really wide, it runs beside a river so really pleasant ride and then we double back, we rode along the kids loop and that's in the Redwood Forest itself. So there's different tracks to suit different abilities. Yeah absolutely, so about 130 kilometres of tracks. In fact, um, Rotorua is well known as a premier riding destination amongst all the mountain bikers. So there are different grades of tracks for beginners and we had a go on level two dipper, which was a smidge more challenging. Um, fantastic fun as you can see, that's my 10 year old there having a really great time. It is signposted all the way around so you know where you are. Mountain Bike Rotorua also operates the Container Cafe, which sells awesome coffee. And they've got smoothies and sammies, cakes and ice creams. And there's a really great picnic area there, so you can sit there and refuel after your ride. And handy dandy place to wash down the dirt off your bike before you head home. Download the map before you go. Sounds awesome. So that looks great, but if you were in Rotorua, then of course you're going to have to check out some of the geothermal activities. Yeah, absolutely. And I can't believe we'd never been to Waimangu Volcanic Valley. So it ticks both the getting active and the geothermal boxes. The six kilometre long valley was created by the 1886 Tarawera eruption, and it's the world's youngest geothermal system, the only one in the world created within written history. So I recommend walking the one and a half k's downhill into the valley. So it Really easy, suitable for kids, plenty to see along the way. So you can see there's sort of panoramic views there of the valley and some of the highlights along the way are the southern crater, a regenerating forest, frying pan lake and the inferno crater lake as well. Loads of steam, really love the atmosphere there. Plenty of information along the way. It is worth downloading the map and the guide before you go if you want to do that. So an easy stroll will get you to bus stop one in about an hour. You can walk further down the valley if you want to, otherwise uh, the bus will take you to Lake Rotomahana where you uh, take the boat ride where you see where the pink and the white terraces used to be. And because it was so popular in the 1800s with people coming to see the eighth wonder of the world, uh, the pink and white terraces, uh, there's a really rich history and an exact record including photographs of how the landscape was changed by the eruption. So we learned so much about the largest natural disaster, it was fantastic. So it's still a really active geothermal area then? Very much so. So the lakes have plenty of steam and bubbles, plenty of fumaroles along the way. Um, some shoot water metres into the air and we really love the surprise at the end of the boat ride as well. Really active geysers along the lake edge and it's really fascinating as well. You get a pamphlet as you can see there and you match where the photograph is to where the white terraces used to be. So the white terrace actually covered three hectares. It was 30 metres high, it was huge. And back in the valley, it's Frying Pan Lake, one of the world's largest hot water springs. There's rare geothermal silica terraces, there's hot springs, steaming vents. So Waimanga Valley, it is really natural. It's being protected from development. Simply stunning walk for the whole family and a chance to learn about our fascinating history. And here's a tip, the bus will take you all the way from the lake back up to the exit. Excellent. But you also managed to squeeze in a little bit of adrenaline for this trip too, didn't you? Oh, now this was the first time the kids have done this, jet boating with KJet. So KJet is the only operator that's allowed to land on Makoya Island in the middle of Lake Rotorua. So Makoya Island's not only a wildlife sanctuary, it's also the site of one of our country's most famous love stories. This is Hinamoa and Tutanakai. And it's the home of some of our most notorious Māori warriors and tribes as well. So our guide Kurt told us the stories really well. So including one of the fiercest battles in Māori history. And then it's a really gentle walk up over the island, meeting the birds like the robins, as you saw there. Lots of saddlebacks, you don't see those on the mainland. Uh, Kereru and Tui along the way. Now afterwards, another half hour of absolute speed, adrenaline, fun on the jet boat. Uh, the kids were really nervous about the jet boat at first, but Kurt is a really excellent driver, so we're all laughing and 
and fizzing as we made our way home. Also, a percentage of what your tour price uh, you pay goes to the Makuya Island Trust for maintenance of the island there as well. That is awesome. What an incredible looking weekend you had. Thank you so much, Debbie. <laughs> no worries. Uh, now, if you would like advice or inspiration for your next holiday in Rotorua, you can go to the RotoruaNZ.com website or on Facebook and Instagram. Search up Rotorua NZ.